Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is a question one of our patrons had over at patreon.com slash AC Service Tech. And the question is, how do you find and fix a low voltage short in a furnace or an air handler? These are some of the components out of a forced air gas furnace. So you have a control board, thermostat, electrical gas valve, you have your low voltage wire running out to your outdoor condensing unit, which you have your contactor here. You have your transformer from inside the furnace. You have your high heat temp sensor for your heat exchanger, flame rollout switch, pressure switch, and your low voltage thermostat. So what you want to determine is, is the fuse blowing right when you turn the main power on to the furnace or the air handler, or is the fuse blowing when you turn it to heat, or when you turn it to cooling, or when you turn it to fan on? So those are some things that will minimize the search area that you're looking at. So let's just look at if you had the fuse blowing when you turned the furnace or the air handler on. So in this case, it's a furnace. So, so there's some more wires in play here. So if you were to turn your power on and it were to pop then, then what you're looking at is some type of red wire such as this or this. So these are your 24 volt wires heading over to your heat sensors. What could happen is one of these could be frayed and touching the metal somewhere and then it's shorting. So that could be an issue. Otherwise, it could be your 24 volt coming off of your R and somehow that's shorting on common. So that could be in your thermostat or it could be in your wiring um, or it could be right here on the on the board. So these, just so you know, these two wires right here, one's an output, and one's an input for 24 volts. It's just sending a 24 volt signal out all the time, making sure that basically that you don't have a fire in your in your furnace because if it if you did have a fire like a flame rollout is tripped or uh, the heat exchanger is really hot then the furnace does not want to start up again now if you find yourself continuing to put a fuse in and it continues to pop you know something that you might want to look into is one of these little poppers the 3 amp uh, circuit breaker and basically you just take your 3 amp fuse out and then you just put your speed connectors in and then you have a resettable breaker instead of blowing all of your fuses. But for those of us that can just go ahead and test that out for resistance, then we don't necessarily need that. That's just something that if you, if you find yourself in that circumstance and you wanna get something like that, then, then go ahead, that, that will end up saving some of your fuses. Okay, so if we're gonna test for resistance to make sure that you, we have these closed and that they're not touching a ground somewhere, is what we'll do is we'll make sure that we pull this pin connector off of the board because you don't want to end up reading resistance values on the board itself. Then we can go ahead and turn our multimeter on to resistance. Okay, so you see that it reads OL, so that's over limit. If you touch the probes together, then you should have 0, 0.0 ohms of resistance. When you don't touch the probes together, then you should read OL. So what we're going to do here is we're going to put one probe in the back of this connector and we're going to put one probe on the ground. So if we have OL, then we know that that is not shorting. We can check the other, other side over here. And once again, we're checking for the ground to make sure that it is not shorting. The other thing that you want to check for is maybe somewhere along the line, the hot and the common are shorting. So we check that. And we are checking this one as well. Okay, so on a, on a forced air gas furnace, over at the gas valve, you have the common and the ground are touching, so you should be able to get your resistance value regardless of where you, if you touch it at the ground or at the common, if it is shorting there. So basically, you just have a 24 volt short between one of the 24 volt power wires and common, and it's happening in front uh, of the control board, basically. It's not happening at the transformer, because if it happened at the transformer, then the transformer would pop. But this fuse is saving the transformer from breaking. So we know it's in front of there somewhere. So now that we check that, the next thing that we could do is check to see if R to common is touching somewhere. So now make sure that your furnace is off and we're gonna go ahead and disconnect our common and our red wire. Now off of your red wire, you could also be having some type of emergency condensate float switch. So if you, as long as you check the wires, check the wires that are running to that from there to ground or from there to common, and it reads OL, then you're safe. And that's not what's popping the fuse. 
then we can just go ahead and take your red wire out and your common wire. So now we're going to go ahead and check the resistance from R to C and you see that it reads OL, over limit. Okay, and then we're also going to check from R to ground and you see that it reads OL again. So that is not your short. So by this time you would have found somewhere is where your short is occurring at because basically it has to be either in your 24 volt safety wiring or your, your red wire coming off of your R terminal. So it will be somewhere in front of that. And another thing is just say you did read resistance between the R and the C. What you could do next is you could pull the thermostat faceplate off and if it read oh well now but it just read 0, 0.0 ohms of resistance then you knew that your thermostat face would be the problem. It was dead shorting between R and C in the thermostat face. But right now as you can see we have no problem. So that takes care of that. So that takes care of if you turn your power on to your furnace or your air handler and the fuse immediately blows that's what you would want to check. Any 24 volt wires after the fuse make sure that they're not shorting directly from 24 volt power to ground or 24 volt power to common. So now we're going to go ahead and take a look at if the fuse blows when you turn it on to cooling, fan, or heat. So say your fuse blew anytime that you turn your fan to on then that would mean that you have some problem with your G wire which would be your green wire because what happens in this case is you have 24 volts coming from the R to the thermostat and in the thermostat it touches the G terminal and then it goes back to the G terminal on the control board. So what's happening there is somewhere between here and here the G wire is touching the common wire. So right there you know that you have a problem with your G wire. Now that G wire could also just be touching the, the ground to the furnace. So one of those two things and that's what's popping your 24 volt 3 amp fuse. If your fuse blew right when you turned it to heat then what's happening is your white wire right here or your W terminal is either touching common or it's touching the ground to the furnace because what happens inside is when you turn this to heat you're touching basically R to W and so you have 24 volts coming to R it touches W in the thermostat faceplate and then it goes back to the control board onto the W so this white wire somewhere is either touching the common or the ground. And finally if you turn this to cooling and then all of a sudden your 24 volt fuse blows then what you have is you have a problem with your either your Y wire from the uh, thermostat to the control board or you have a problem with your Y terminal out to your outdoor condenser unit. So it could be one of those two things and in this case we're going to go ahead and diagnose a fault. We have a fault in here and it's directly shorting to common. So we're going to show you how to find that. So first things first, okay, your fuse blew, you're going to then go ahead and turn your power off to your furnace or your air handler. Then after that you're going to go ahead and open up your thermostat faceplate. We're going to disconnect our Y wiring from the control board. You always want to disconnect the wiring from the control board so you don't read the resistance of the actual resistors in the board. And just to be safe, what we'll do is we'll take off the common wire as well. So we're reading OL on ohms over limit. So now what we do is we check from the Y to the blue. Make sure that you're getting a good reading on it and if you need to you can use alligator clips instead of just the probes. So right there you see that we do not have a problem on this side of the thermostat wiring. So now we're going to go ahead and check our outdoor condenser wire right here. And before we check resistance value of this, what you want to do is you want to turn the power off to the outdoor condensing unit and then we want to disconnect the wires off of the, the contactor because you could accidentally read the resistance value on the coil back here. In this case I'll, I'll use my wire strippers and cutters. I always use these in order to pull spade terminals off never try to pull them by hand I always use them. So now let's test the resistance value on the contactor. If this was the problem we would read 0, 0.0 ohms of resistance. Okay so this is not the problem this is reading 8.6 ohms of resistance so, so that is just we're reading the resistance of the coil back here on the contactor. So now let's read the resistance values in the wires themselves. 
And if you feel like you're not getting good contact on those wires and you want to use alligator clips. So there you see that we're having the problem right there is on the actual wires itself. So now that you know that that's the problem, you would go ahead and replace this wire right here. You could even just isolate, just make sure that it's not these wires just by undoing the wire nuts. But basically you know that this wire right here is the problem. That's how you determine where a problem is in the thermostat wire. You basically need to take sections of wire out of play, disconnect them from the control board, test resistance values in order to find the problem. And if you want to help support these HVACR training videos, check out patreon.com slash acservicetech, where we're rewarding the members there by adding extra content such as articles, videos, and answering questions. And if you're looking for the tools used in these videos, I have them linked down in the description below. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.